it's so unique to me. The reason I pick it is because it's such an interesting new way of making a film. When I saw it, I didn't realize you could make a movie like this. Mm -hmm. like this. Hey everybody, I'm Nick. I'm a director living in Taiwan. Hey everybody, I'm Luke. I'm a cinematographer living in Taiwan. And today we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, I want us to recommend three films each that mm -hmm. we think people from the West who don't know much about Chinese and Chinese language films should see. Mm -hmm. So we're each going to talk about three films that we personally think that if you are just starting watching movies from China, yeah. Asia, Taiwan, Hong Kong, then these are the ones that you can start with. Yeah. Um, I think the terms, the way we define the selections will be movies from China, Hong Kong, and Taiwan. Just right off the bat, you know we love the film E.E. E. It's not on either of our lists, but for me, it's like number one. Yeah. So go see that one. But it's like so good, and we've talked about it so many times yeah. that I kind of felt like it's not fair to put it on the list. Okay. You know what I mean? You mean like no matter what, it should be watched. Yeah, it Even should be it's watched. On a, it's not on the list, but you know, you should watch that movie. That's like the first one that I'll always recommend. Right. And it was me the too. first video. No, I did. for me, it's like, oh, I have to speak. I have to mention EE, -E, but yeah, yeah. in some way you needed to put out some other film yeah, yeah. in order to, you know. Yeah, I can't just say one, two, three is EE. -E. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Uh, okay, so my first film that I want to recommend is Raise the Red Lantern. Da Hong Den Nong Ga Ga Gua. By uh, Zhang Yimou. And it's, it stars Gong Li. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love this film because it's, it's kind of set in a singular location in this like rich guy's house. Yeah. So it's an interesting kind of setup. And then it has these three, he has three different wives. Yeah. And then the new wife coming in and all the problems that she has in mm -hmm. this new, uh, new environment. And uh, I love it because it's a personal story about, you know, the, the difference, like problems in relationships. And, and also it's like a little bit of history because this is a unique thing to China where like a rich guy would have multiple wives. Yeah. But then it's also a metaphor, I think, for Chinese Communist Party oh, and yeah. the conflicts oh, that wow. happen. That's why it's like the Political. Red Lantern oh. is like a metaphor for like the Ch Communist Party. Right. And so each wife, my, my interpretation of the movie is that each wife is, represents a different class in society under the Communist Party and the, the rich guy is like the government. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so it's all about how the different classes fight with each other mm -hmm, when mm -hmm. really the problem is not the classes, it's about the, you know, the setup of the situation. Right? Yeah. Um, and I think it's a, I, I think the reason that Zhang Yimou filmed it in this way was because so he could kind of hide his government critique within this relationship story. Really good idea. Yeah, that's, that's at least what I believe it's about. So I think it's a really excellent film. It's also just very dramatic and very well done. So. Yeah. And for me, it would be 1994, 1994 to Live. Mm. It's directed by Zhang, Zhang Yimou, same director. Which is uh, including a lot of his, his history development like before the World War II and after yeah. the World War II, the how Chinese people live in a, under yeah. these circumstances. So it starts in the Qing Dynasty, right? Yeah, starting in the Qing Dynasty, the, the, the man actor is, uh, is a real... I He's mean, a rich guy. Rich guy, Len Road. The interesting, so like different. the opening of the movie, I think is really cool because he's a gambling addict. He loses all his money on the right. Qing, Qing yeah. Dynasty. Then he becomes a poor guy. Then the Chinese, the Communist Party takes over and because he's a poor guy, turns out he's okay. And the guy that, that he lost all his oh, money right. to, who becomes rich, yeah. actually ends up getting killed. Getting killed. So this is like this isn't this isn't really a spoiler because it happens in the beginning of the movie, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, and so it kind of it's a, the whole movie is a little bit about like that idea of like good luck turning to bad luck and then bad luck turning to good luck, yeah, and like all, like kind of like the circular way that life changes and how things that you think are really terrible end up becoming yeah good for you. You think less bad for him. He 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 loses his all his property, but. Losing those property make him live. Saved his life. Yeah. yeah. But in a, in a way, you think about it, and why should I have to lose my old properties? You know what? If I am not a gambler, I should be killed? Should I? Or yeah, not? Yeah, yeah. So this is a very interesting metaphor for someone living in those era would be, oh, I totally understand how they live, right? Yeah. Because you can totally knowing what's happening, if you are a landlord or you have property or not, 
will occur to you. I mean, it's I it's such know. a good movie because it it starts from Qing Dynasty, goes to the war with the KMT taking over. It goes, you know, the Japanese invasion. Then it goes to uh, communists taking over. It goes from the communist. Party、mm-hmm. taking over to the Cultural Revolution. Yeah, I think that's where it ends. Is around the Cultural Revolution where people are getting yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. like persecuted and, and like the, within the Communist Party there was like a fight between、uh, people. So, so if you're a, if you don't know much about Chinese history, this is like number one first movie to watch. It gives you like whole overview of more recent Chinese history from the from、uh, the end of the Dynasty Qing Dynasty up until not all the way till now, but up until like. Kind of seventies, sixties, seventies, eighties, maybe.、Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's just like a, it's almost like a history lesson, a but it's also a really really well made film.、So、yes. Yeah. Great. Great pick. So this is why I recommend it. Yeah. I love. Yeah. That's a great movie.、Um, my number two that I want to recommend is Shaolin Soccer. Yeah. Which is a Hong Kong film. <laughs> I like、it's、it. Directed by really、Steven、enjoyable、Joe. movie. If you don't know who Stephen Joe is, then you need to get your life together. Like Stephen Joe is. Maybe the best. I say this, you know, best comedic actor in the world, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Stephen Joe is the funniest. Like, and it's really if you want to understand comedy, Chinese style comedy,、mm-hmm. that's where you go. Yeah, he has such a unique style, and it's so funny and so interesting. He blends in drama to his movies a little bit.、Um, this movie has, you know, the element of kung fu. Uh, kind of mixed in, and it's like a so- it's like a joke, right? So it's kung fu soccer, soccer,、yeah. but it also has some good like kind of kung fu stuff because I think Stephen Joe is like really obsessed with kung fu actually. Yeah,、like、he makes it funny, but he also really does love kung fu movies.、Mm-hmm. So it has like a respect for like the kung fu movie, but then it also has like the comedy part of it.、Mm-hmm. And I just think as an introduction to a director, if you start if you watch this movie and you like it. There, he's made, not directed, but he's been in as an actor maybe eighty movies.、Mm-hmm. So if you like this, then and you watch it, then you'll have a ton of movies that you can go back and check out and watch. Yeah, and they're all hilarious. So yeah, it's a very enjoyable movie. Yeah, so in、good. terms of you like kung fu or not, it's yeah great movie. Yeah, it make you. Laugh, you make you sad a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, there's some emotional stuff, and I rewatched it recently, the, and I didn't realize like there's、uh, some sad parts. I was like almost crying. <laughs> yeah, and also the after if I mean the cam, 就是特效 Yeah, yeah, the special effects. Special effects still. I mean, they're funny, so they can kind of get away with it. Yeah, I think it's good. It's good enough for me to enjoy. Yeah, as like a comedy, they work for sure. Very, very good. And not the best, but then like they're they're pretty good. Yeah,、so, yeah, such a good movie, Shaolin Soccer. Well, when it turns off speaking in Hong Kong movie,、yeah. there's another genre, 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 genre movie called you know Please Against Movie. Yeah, yeah. So there's one epic you need to check out is called Infernal Affairs. Yeah. Wu Jiandao, which representing all the good thing in Hong Kong. I mean, in this this kind of general. Genre, genre movies. Yeah, yeah. You can see the policemen how they deal with the gangster and how the gangster deal with the policemen, and also the vice versa for each parties. And this is a good pick for Western people to watch、uh, Hong Kong or get into Hong Kong movies because you have a reference. This movie was the inspiration for the movie The Departed. So The Departed is actually a remake of this movie, Infernal、yeah. Affairs. Yeah. So it's the same setup as the film of The Departed, where there is a Police officer that has infiltrated the gangsters,、mm-hmm. and a gangster that has infiltrated the police. Yes. And so they've switched positions, and then they're fighting each other from opposite positions,、mm-hmm. one both as spies. Yeah. yeah. And the whole movie is kind of confusing you. Is who is who, right? It yeah. Who's you the good guy? Who's the bad guy? You don't guy? really know who is good guy and then who is bad guy. Is a bad guy bad? Is a good guy good? You、yeah. don't know. There's no clear. Uh, like judgment, like you know, this is bad guy. But、yeah. the bad guy wanted to do good things, and the bad and the good guy sometimes doing bad things. Yeah,、so. I think the, the, an interesting thing about this movie is when the first time I saw it, I didn't like it that much actually because it's it's very Hong Kong style. Yeah, and if you and if you're coming into it and you don't, and you're not really used to that, you might think some of it's a little bit cheesy or something like that.、Mm-hmm. So I would just say watch it with an open mind and. 
kind of put yourself in the perspective of like this is a different style of filmmaking. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not an American gangster movie. American no. gangster movies are totally different. So like The Departed is more is like they took this and they tried to make it like an American gangster movie. Uh -huh. But this is not that. You know. No, so, I I also watched the the, the movie called uh, The Departed. The Departed. I don't like it. It's totally yeah, different know. from this one. Exactly. And and uh, everybody who watches Infernal Affairs says they hate The Departed. Yeah. But because because they totally change it because mm. it's just a different it's a different style. I almost think they can't even really be compared. No. Because it's the story inspiration, but it's not even close to yeah, the same yeah, kind of yeah. movie. You know. Cool. So um, all right. So number three. My number three pick is a Taiwanese film. It's called Xiao Mei, and it's mm. from 2018. I saw this. I was lucky enough to see this at the Berlin Film Festival, cool. um, and I watched it there. Uh, it was one of the. I think it maybe was the first screening or early screening of the film, and it was. It's so unique to me. The reason I pick it is because it's such an interesting new way of making a film. When I saw it, I didn't realize you could make a movie like this. Mm -hmm. Like the the whole film is. Uh, people getting interviewed. It's almost like a fake documentary, sort of, but not really. It's like people getting interviewed by the director, and he and they're telling him, like this story of this girl who's who's missing. Mm -hmm. And so you, as you get each story, all these different people who knew her, you get to piece together this mystery of who this girl was and her whole life. Okay. And it's it's just very it's just a, such a cool way to make a movie that and so artistic and the, and all of the framings of the different sh different areas that they shoot in are really really well done cool. i mean it's just just a fantastic movie very inspirational for me when i saw it i was like oh wow this is like a new way to make a movie that i never thought of it's almost like uh, reading a novel or something mm. like like like, like interview those actor actress in the yeah. front of the camera and like telling the, the story they know about a girl. Yeah, or like a play in a way. It's like a little bit like a play, a little bit like ah. a documentary, a little bit like a novel. Like, like, like it's just very, it's just different. Different. But it's also very cinematic because you get all these different locations, and it's not like it's not cinematic. Like it, it's, it works as a movie. Cool. So, and the third recommendation of, for me is. Also from China, it's it's called uh, Eleven Sitting Still. Yeah, it's really a metaphor of the 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 mindset of the people. They wanted to get away from where they live right now. So they they say there's an elephant sitting in the nowhere. So I wanted to go and see the elephant, but reality is I wanted to get out of here. Mm. So the whole story is about. Lo there's a, a lot of different characters. They mm. all wanted to leave where they live to see the elephant, yeah. right? And the reason they li wanted to leave the place that they live is because there's a lot of nonsense happened around them. And they all connect together to go to the, see the elephant. The third or even half of the, s of the, of the movie is using steady can and there's a long take all the way through and they're having conversations. So you really... So it gives you like a point of view kind of look? Po to yeah, look almost like point of view. And you, you are experiencing all the bullshit things happening around you. Interesting. And you so wanted it to always, leave too. always from behind the main actor? Yeah, always from oh, behind. Oh, wow. That's cool. But I sometimes it's short of fun, you know? But right, right. But like a lot of time from behind. It's almost like a um, uh, kind of maybe a uh, move towards thinking about filmmaking as like a VR experience, yes, right? Yes. Where you could actually you make that movie as like a VR thing where you are have like a 360 view and that you're point walking of view. around and talking to different people. Yeah. But still you can you can see how the actor react cuz you can So they'll, they'll do see. reaction shots sometimes. They do reaction shots sometimes. Mm. But the character moving you can see the shoulder from mm. her. I mean, I haven't seen this movie yet, but I want to watch it, so maybe we'll review it later. And this is a long movie, for three hours. Whew. Three movies from me, three movies from Luke that we yeah. think you can check out. Uh, if you have movies that you love, recommend them in the comments. Tell us what you think your top films are from uh, the China region, China, Taiwan, Hong mm. Kong. Uh, we'll have more reviews coming soon, so stay tuned. Share, like, subscribe, hit the bell. Yeah, see you next bye -bye. time. Bye-bye.